The study of knowledge has a long tradition in Western culture. Uh, it has been studied by philosophers, um, psychologists, sociologists, how knowledge is uh, produced, how it is acquired, is also relevant for teachers. In contrast, the study of ignorance has received much less attention. Uh, I intend to examine the role of ignorance, in particular one type of ignorance, conscious ignorance, and its relevance for teachers and teaching. Of course, ignorance has been already examined in education, for example, in regard to misconceptions or failures in comprehension monitoring. There have been studies on the role of beliefs of students, for example, in science, that are not appropriate or adequate from the point of view of science, but that students held and without being aware that these beliefs are not correct, are not appropriate. This is a form of ignorance that has been extensively studied in education. Also, in education and in psychology, there have been studies of ignorance under the form of failures in monitoring comprehension. For example, providing students of short paragraphs that include contradictions and examining whether students are aware of these contradictions, are aware of their own lack of understanding or not. However, these types of students, of studies, consider ignorance mainly from a negative point of view. They look at the negative side of ignorance, but there is also a positive side of ignorance that should be considered in education and in teaching. I plan to examine this type of ignorance that plays positive roles in learning and, of course, in teaching. To examine this positive side of ignorance, I will first address a categorization of the different types of ignorance and their positive roles. Then I will examine one particular type of ignorance, conscious ignorance, pointing out that it should be considered as a construct that has a certain structure and that is actively built and not to be considered as a passive, simple, passive lack of knowledge. Finally, or in the third place, I will examine some factors that influence the construction of conscious ignorance, in particular, the knowledge of the ignorant person and the task in which he or she is involved. Finally, I will end with some conclusions. Michael Smithson, who is a psychologist who did an extensive study on ignorance, and especially in social settings, uh, classifies or categorizes the types of uh, different types of ignorance using a two by two table in which there is a distinction between knowledge and the lack of knowledge.
on the one hand. And in a different dimension, there is a distinction between awareness or unawareness, both of knowledge and of lack of knowledge. According to these uh, distinctions, there may be knowledge that is consciously known, knowledge subjects are aware of. This is the most common type of knowledge. This uh, is termed known knowns and corresponds, of course, to conscious knowledge. Then there is knowledge one may be unaware of, that is tacit knowledge. Also, regarding unknowns, there may be unknowns, that is ignorance, one is aware of, that is termed conscious ignorance. And then there are unknowns or ignorance one is unaware of, and this constitutes meta-ignorance or unknown unknowns. Conscious ignorance results from a transition from meta-ignorance to conscious ignorance to known unknowns. That is, that implies a type of discovery different from the one that is normally uh, considered that is the discovery of knowledge of a new law, for example. In that case, knowledge is found in the discovery of conscious ignorance. A problem is found, that is, there is a change from a pool of unknown unknowns, from meta-ignorance to conscious ignorance. Conscious ignorance is defined by the sociologist Robert Merton under the term specified ignorance and it is precisely defined as the express recognition of what is not yet known but needs to be known in order to lay the foundation for still more knowledge. Well, and that is related to one of the main roles of conscious ignorance. Learning by inquiry or scientific in uh, inquiry requires problems to be found, conscious unknowns to be identified as a first step in the construction or in building knowledge. And that is one of the first important positive roles of conscious ignorance, both in scientific research and also in learning in classrooms.